I go to the toilet every day. And I assume that you all go to the toilet every day too. It doesn't matter whether you're the Pope or the President or the Prime Minister, we all go to the toilet. And in a weird kind of way, it connects us all as human beings. Most of us in this room live in the tropics. And we live in a very special part of the tropics. Because most of us in this part of the tropics, when we go to the toilet, we use something like this. It's safe, it's secure, we don't have to worry too much about our daily ablutions. However, that's not the situation for many people who live in the tropics. A couple of weeks ago, I was in the Solomon Islands, and I took this photograph. This is the men's and the boys' toilet for a village. 200 men and boys use this single toilet for their needs. In the same village, this is the women's toilet for 200 women and girls. Imagine if you're pregnant, you're old and frail, it's wet, it's raining, and it's windy, and there are five other people who need to go. In this village, most people have hookworm or roundworm. These are parasites that live in your intestine, but they also have a stage that lives in the environment. Now, many people will have seen pictures like this, kids with big bellies and skinny arms and legs. This is often because of roundworm. Roundworm can um, stop people, kids, from thriving and cause them to be able to fail or to um, not thrive at school. However, it can be worse than that. In this very village, there's been some kids who have died from roundworm because there were so many roundworm in their intestine that it blocked their intestine and they died. Something clearly that we don't want for our kids. I love living in the tropics. And I've lived in the tropics since I was a small boy. When I was 16 years old was the first time when I went to the South Pacific and I kind of got hooked. And my career is very much embedded within the South Pacific now. I, live, I work with a fantastic group of researchers and community people to be able to look at what the health issues are for people at the grassroots, and to be able to work with people to look at locally appropriate solutions for those health issues. I'd like to make a particular um, mention of Chief Fufofimai Kekiobata, who is in the um, audience with us today. One of the things that we are doing together is looking at parasites. And we're particularly looking at the role of toilets in parasites. And you might say, well, why toilets? Don't we have some great medicine, some great drugs? If you've got some parasites in your belly, just go to the doctor and get some medicine. Well, yes, we do. We have some really great medicine. And they're actually really quite efficient at killing those parasites in your belly. However, those drugs don't hang around in your body. What that means is that you can quickly become reinfected with those parasites. If you live in a village where there's lots of parasite eggs and, and uh, larvae around, you will quickly become reinfected. And so what do toilets do? Toilets are very efficient in containing our human waste. And therefore, toilets can contain the eggs, the larvae, and the other nasties that we excrete. So what that means is that if there are things like these guys, this is a hookworm egg and a roundworm egg. They look quite benign, maybe even a little bit pretty. But if they are not contained in a toilet, then this is what happens to the hookworm egg. It turns into a larvae. And that sits in the soil. The hookworm larvae's job is to find another human host. And if you happen to be someone walking along, with no shoes on, that hookworm larvae is going to go 
into your leg and infect you and continue the life cycle of that hookworm. What that means for me, if I go to the Pacific and I get infected with hookworm, which I have on a number of occasions, I come home, I take some medicine, and I use a toilet like this. What that means is that all of my waste is contained. I don't reinfect other people, or I don't reinfect myself. However, that's not the situation for my friends in the Pacific. What they do if they have had some medication from the clinic, they go home to a toilet like this, which they share with their cousins and their uncles and their nephews and their sons. And most of those people will also have hookworm or roundworm. What that means is this is a, a really dangerous place to go. You know why? Because this is paradise if you're a parasite. It's warm, it's moist, it's shady, and people come to you all of the time. So if you're a, a hookworm larvae, this is fantastic. This is exactly where you want to be. And so what we are doing is we're working with people to, to try and to be able to understand toilets. And let me tell you something. Toilets are funny things. Because wherever you go in the world, they're different. How, what, when, where, and why you use a toilet can change dramatically from where you come from to where you might be visiting. And so we are engaging in this discussion. People will say, well, what about in the Pacific? Isn't the Pacific full of idyllic villages with happy people? Yes, it is. And that's one of the reasons I love being in the Pacific. However, if you have a look at a map, here we are in Cairns, a country to our immediate east, Vanuatu, a country to our northeast, Solomon Islands, and a country to our north are incredibly diverse places. Diverse environmentally, but also incredibly diverse on a human level. In Vanuatu, there are a hundred different languages. In the Solomon Islands, there are 80 different languages, and indeed to our north, in Papua New Guinea, there are 800 different languages. That means in this small part of the Pacific, we have a thousand different language groups. That's a thousand different ways of engaging with the world, a thousand different ways of engaging with your environment, a thousand different ways of engaging with your clan and your kin, and a thousand different ways of thinking about toilets. So what happens at the moment? This is a photo I took a couple of uh, weeks ago, and this is a toilet for 100 kids at a primary school. Again, if you're a parasite, this is fantastic. You'd love living here. Not so good if you're a kid. Because also, just about 10 metres away, this is the only water source for that school that has a couple of hundred kids and five teachers. So washing your hands can be quite difficult. So what that means is that these kids that go to school every day and love going to school are either at risk or have parasites. This is a picture of me walking to the toilet. Now, you probably can't see a toilet. That's because a building doesn't exist. In this village, I've got to go into the mangroves and I've got to find a mangrove root and perch on there very carefully and do my business. This is my mate Pete in another village that's just down the road. What we were looking at is the sanitation options. This is the only formal toilet for 200 men and boys in that village. Again, if you're a hookworm larvae, this is paradise. It's warm, it's moist, it's shady, and there's people coming to you all of the time. So, what can we do about this? Well, imagine if you live on this island, a beautiful island in the middle of the Pacific. You've got four or five hundred other people who live on that island with you. And an organisation comes along and would really like to help out. 
with the parasite issue that you have. And they give medicine to everybody, which is fantastic. And they realize that sanitation is very, very important. But when they come along, they'd like to take a toilet like this into your village. Immediately you start thinking. Because you know where you come from, water is very sacred. It's very taboo. And the organization has just explained that they're going to take some water from a water source and put it in a pipe and put it into the toilet to flush away your waste. But you know in your village where you have lived and the people before you for hundreds and thousands of years that is taboo to crap in the water. You know that if you crap in the small water, water sources in the creeks and in the rivers that you will get sick. Your family will get sick. That the spirits of the ancestors will be angry because you have not respected that water. And this organization is coming and wanting to you to put that water into a toilet. Even more worrying is this organization saying, well, halfway down in the pipe we can split, uh, uh, split uh, another pipe off to the side and we can put a tap on there so that people can drink from that. You know in your village that because that water has been piped to the toilet, it will be impossible to drink from that tap because that water is now taboo. Also think if you come from an island that is facing the direct consequences of climate change, that this might be your toilet and that year after year, over the last decade or so, that the high tides have been getting higher and higher. And in the last few years, there's been raw sewerage that has been washed into the main part of the village because of an increase in the sea level. These are all real issues that we are working with with our colleagues in the Solomon Islands. So what are we doing? Well, we know that there are some places, even in very remote islands, that if they have functional toilets that can contain the parasites and the other nasties, have clean running water that people have access to washing their hands every day and have access to medication that we can essentially eliminate parasites from these locations. Even where you might have a village down the road where half of the people are infected. So what we're doing is using a combination of science and of culture to be able to work with people to understand what are the locally appropriate location, what are the parasites or the bugs that are in those locations and being able to work on solutions that are appropriate for that village. So what we understand is the combination of the parasite, the environment, the materials that you have at hand and essentially the people, the beliefs, the traditions and the taboos of people in combination to look at this health issue. So what we are doing is looking at the complexities and the dynamic opportunities that we have to be able to work with communities to address sanitation in the Pacific. So what I'd like each one of you to do is next time that you sit on a toilet, whether it be a toilet like this that flushes and you use toilet paper, or a toilet like this that is made out of local materials. It has thatching on the walls. It can use uh, salt water and you can use leaves and coconut husk that you don't have to buy from the store. How lucky you are to be using a toilet in the tropics that's safe. And think about the moral and the ethical obligation that you now have to think about sanitation for the other people in the tropics that are not so lucky and also to think about the opportunity that we all have to engage in this very important area of toilets and taboos in the tropics. Thank you. <laughs>